Welcome to Culture Couch Live for this week. We've got Carly and we've got Jared and an unfamiliar face we'll introduce in a minute. So, uh, g'day, Carly. G'day, Jez. Hi, Rizzy. How are you doing? Morning, Hello, mate. Morning, Ralphie. Yeah. Very good. G'day, folks. Hello, Ralph. Now, Carly, I want you to introduce Ralph. We've got a new guest, popular demand. Last week's Culture Couch was so good, Murph, for your, with your guest. So, Ralph's got a lot to live up with today. <laughs> so, Carly, do you want to uh, introduce our... Uh, Culture Couch live yes. guest for today. Absolutely. So this is Ralph O'Shaughnessy and he is the HR manager at Higgins Coatings or Higgins Paints as we like to call them. So Ralph is one of our great customers or partners if you like and as we've worked with the Higgins group for up to six, six years consistently, Ralph, we decided, didn't we? Yes, correct. I started six years. Yeah, and so the Higgins business is a really, really great family business with um, many branches around the country. So a really strong New South Wales, Queensland, Victorian branch, and then also over in SA and WA. So, so Ralph manages a lot of people and a lot of teams um, and really has to get, you know, those cultural elements across those standards and um, different branches to make sure that they're all operating in a similar manner. So um, I've been working with Ralph over the cu last couple of months to visit those branches and to really um, reinstill the business values. So I just thought it would be great to have Ralph here just to give his perspective on culture um, and, and what it looks like for their business, because obviously every business is a little bit different. But Ralph, it's great to have you here. And maybe you can just tell us a little bit about, about your cultural journey, if you like. Terrific. And thank you, everyone. Thanks for the opportunity. Yes, yeah, so I've been with Higgins now just over six years. I um, started in consultancy capacity, but the persuasion of working for a family business was too strong, and that's when I took up in a full-time position here. Prior to that, I've worked at a lot of large multinationals, um, both here and overseas, so had the benefit of being able to work and see different cultures in operation, but also different sized businesses, um, both obviously public, private, and family. The Higgins business, um, 77 years old, started by... Uh, the father um, and it's got 20 branches across Australia mainland uh, just over 500 employees currently and we work with about just over a thousand contractors that's both head and um, you know smaller contractors so very large reach across the business world we work primarily in the commercial space and um, we do some new construction work but if you think about it you know defense bases schools you know retirement villages those large commercial enterprises are the ones that, that we operate in. So, Ralphie, before I, I hand over to Murph to talk more about the, the Higgins, and you and I have gone, even, I don't know if the Carly knows this, but um, so Mur uh, Ralph and I worked together at the Swans. So Ralph was actually the board man for, for Rodney E. So before we get into sort of the, the corporate world, what did what did you pick up? Because obviously Murph and I have worked a lot with the sporting teams, and even though now we're, what, 95% corporate, what, what was it that you saw within a footy club that perhaps led you to, to bring us in? And I know we knew each other before, but was that part of it that you knew a lot about what had happened inside the Sydney Swans? I know you've got a strong background with an amateur footy club as well. So tell us a little bit about that connection from sport to, to business. Yeah, and, and thanks. You. We do actually send Carly a photograph earlier saying that, that who was the real strength behind the throne um, <laughs> back, in, back in the Swans days. But, it, it, but what I was able to really take away from there was just the importance of consistency, of reviewing, going back yeah. and reviewing on a, on a more regular basis than what a business would do. And so where I saw the opportunity for improvement in, in the places that I've worked at was rather than just waiting for your half yearly review or your quarterly yeah. review, there was a real opportunity to have more regular dialogue around what are those things we did well, what are those things we can improve on, and so you would, and then people would have a, a much more regular conversation. That's what I really took away from the football world and the time I spent learning from you. Secondly, also the really importance of creating the right culture and having it sort of almost branded as obviously it's talked about um, you know, quite regularly so that people could identify. So in the football world, the Swans obviously it's the Bloods, but being yeah. able to talk about what does that culture mean within a business? And yeah. so there's some really fascinating lessons that I learned there that I was able to bring across in all the places that I've worked. And that's one of the things I've tried to establish is, you know, what's, the, what's our culture? What's our brand around that? 
not just by a tagline, but then being able to use that as a real anchor for the business to leverage from and get better from. Yeah, fantastic. Murph, I, I'd probably bring you in the conversation by saying you, you've had a long association with the family itself. So and I'll ask you a question before you defer to Ralphie, but is there, an, is there a noticeable difference between a family company that, that gets bigger and bigger and bigger than, say, a, you know, a normal corporate you know, Westpac or you know, whatever? Like, tell us a bit about that before you bring Ralphie into that conversation as well. Yeah, it's it's really interesting because family businesses, um, they they are in generally they have the fam the family values. So you you've got the you got a really strong value space through it, and then as the business grows, if they're successful, it becomes harder and harder to maintain that values uh, base or that value system as it as it goes out. And so. Um, you're right. I've I've known Jared and John for a long time. Jared uh, John's a fanatical um, Geelong supporter, so John will be very happy this week. Um, <laughs> and so I've known them for a long time. So after after uh, Geelong success, I came in to meet with Jared and John yeah. and had a good chat with them. And we sort of started the program off there. And we started with the with the executive team. And the executive team was really interesting at that time because. While it was being driven by the, the strong family values, they, we had, they hadn't taken the time necessarily to say, okay, how do we want to behave as a collective? And, and from that session on, I think it changed the way the business operated, Ralph. Like it, it, it wouldn't be, I don't think it's an overstatement. Um, they, they really changed the way they uh, conducted their meetings and what was important to them. And it gave them a much clearer perspective on, on who should be there or not. And then, as as the business, um, as we took the program through the business, it it made a <clears throat> it gave them a bit more clarity. Um, but I think Ralph, just uh, just to pick up, I was going to throw to you around the when when you when you work for a family company because you work for the the Golden Arches as well. I think haven't you, McDonald's? Yeah, I work for so, Yeah, yeah. so I'd, I'd like to throw to you as well because you've you've obviously got this multinational versus family business and what do you see as the as the difference and is it easier to have an impact on a family business than it is on a on a multinational mm. yeah it is nice question it, 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 yeah it's interesting because i think given the size and the complexity of some of those large multinationals people can survive without really contributing yeah. because mm -hmm. they get lost in the totality of the system the system's so big it's sort of difficult for it to to break um, and and difficult for and poor behaviours can sort of get camouflaged in the overall success of the business, which could be even better. And I think a lot of things are more tolerated within the family business, um, and because it's a, a smaller dynamic, that but more, there's more personal interactions because the family get to know just about everyone in the business. And you and you raised a good point about the business sort of reaching a fault line where Jared can't know everybody in the business. So yeah. what we have to try and do is work our way to make certain that he's the way he wants the business and John and the family values get to that person that starts in the new branch in Darwin, for example. Yeah. And, and that's the really great thing that this sort of process through the performance by design systems allowed us to do is be able to take it and cascade from Jared all the way through the business, what it is that and how it is we want to operate. Um, as I say, in, in McDonald's, there was a lot of people that I knew that, you know, wouldn't have survived in a smaller business yeah. or a smaller family environment where they would have been sort of put more under the under under the spotlight as to their behaviours and their performance. So it, it's it's interesting. And the other thing in a family is you can get things done a bit quicker, um, yeah. you know, for better or for worse. <clears throat> yeah. And, and a lot of emotion comes into it, not just pure process, a lot of emotion. I was going to say, I think there's another side to it too, which is uh, quite difficult. Is like, I went to the um, the 70, 70th anniversary, I think, of the business, um, and <clears throat> it was fantastic. Ruzi and Carly, all the all the team were there, so it gave you a really strong family feel of the business. But then the the flip side of that is is that you you become so loyal to people, it's really hard. Mm. Um, to sort of continue to develop them and then and enable them to do their job when they've when they were with you at the beginning and sometimes it doesn't always pan out that they're the right person as the business expands and I think 
uh, watching family businesses, that's also another an, another consideration that you have to take into account. Would you agree with that, Ralph? Yeah, absolutely. And sort of one of the other components is that, um, you know, a lot of companies talk about an open door policy and you can talk to everyone. Well, within this business, anyone can ring Jared at any time. Yeah. So yeah. quite different to a lot of places where you have to, you know, work your way up through a process and you know, yeah. lodge an issue here. And Jared rings people a lot. He'll just go directly into somebody. Um, so that's another dynamic, but it's, uh, it's quite refreshing because he's also able to tap into whether or not the things that we're talking about we're doing, whether they're being lived at at the branch level. And so he's able to sort of see, well, is this happening? Is that happening? And he's able to get direct line of sight yeah. into are we living our values and, and what are the examples that we're talking about on a day-to-day basis? Yeah. yeah. And I think on that, Ralph, too, isn't it? The fact that we're now, which is great, we're working below the, you know, the C-suite level. You mentioned, Murph, I remember going up to the, the nice house in the, not the Dandenongs, but somewhere up this beautiful place that we went to and we did Hills, that. Hillsville. Where is it? Hillsville. Yeah, beautiful. And But the fact that we're working down, I'll, I'll throw to you, Carly, as well, because you've recently been around Australia. It's allowed consistency, Ralphie. You, you mentioned that at a footy club review and that. Is that one of the, the great strengths of performance by design and Carly and all the levels we've been working with, um, that there's you're starting to see consistency around behaviours. We obviously start with the C-suite because we want them to be role models, but the beauty of getting down to the other levels, they're starting to hold them each other accountable to those values and behaviours as well. Yeah, written down in my notes here, consistency, and I think, and, and you know, I'll let Carly talk to it after this, is that I can go into any branch and talk about the same sorts of things through that I've learned through the session. And they're yep. not unfamiliar. People don't look at you with a blank expression. And, yep. and they know that, yeah, this is what we do. This is how we do it. And so, and the regularity of it, you know, the shout outs that you've incorporated, that you've got us to incorporate. doesn't matter where I go in Australia, before yep. they start a meeting, there's shout outs and they're now linking them to the values. So yep. a really significant progression from just saying, well done to shout out this was this person because they demonstrated this value and behaviour. Um, yeah. So really, really important. Yeah, and and I must um, congratulate you, Ralph, just on the visualization of the values. So you know, whenever you go into someone's office, they're always on the walls. They're everywhere. People are really familiar with them, which is excellent. And even one of the good ideas last week, um, someone said, you know, for the people or the contractors out on site, make them little wallet sizes values cards so that they can just carry them around with them in their pockets or whatever that looks like. So. You know, getting really familiar with the values is great. Um, but I guess my question to you is now that when you've seen some of these recent sessions happen, um, what and having contractors out on site who work for you but are not necessarily full-time employees, what are, what are some of the benefits you see for them in having this consistency of message and, and the values that really permeate through the different branches? What's really important and... Um we've had sessions across all branches is that they can go out and work with, with our contractors and we're confident that our employees know what we expect of them. So they're not just being told by their supervisor and they've also bought into it. They understand why safety is important. They understand excellence and, you know, the cues as we call them, commitment, unity, excellence and safety. They understand why they're so important to drive the performance of the business. Yeah. So they're able to articulate those and help guide our contractors through those same set of circumstances. So they can reward the good behaviours that they see on site and they can challenge the behaviours that they see on site that are not consistent with what we talk about. Even last week, you know, we had um, in Australia, we were there, we were right? You know, the foreman there as well. So it's not just, you know, management there, it's foremen and painters that are learning and understanding why this is so critical to the success of the business. I reckon that's one of the critical things, Ralph. Like, I remember one of the first sessions, uh, really, I was running it in Melbourne, and you, you, I'm sure you were there, where um, I think Ruzi asked, you know, who, who's, the, who's the people at the front of the business? And someone said painters, and, and we, we said, well, do we spend any time with the painters? And it was like, oh, my God, we actually don't. And hmm. it, was sort of, it was almost like a realisation. So what the beauty of what... I think Higgins has done and you've done is you've taken it from, as you said, the management, but you've actually then taken it right to the right to yeah. the people who are actually delivering the work. 
And so there's this, this shared understanding of, of, your, of your values or cues, um, which so many businesses, they, they do the, the, the you know, executive, they do the minus one, perhaps minus two, but then they never, they actually never get to the, the bigger group underneath. And as a result of that, you, you never quite get the, the buy-in or the penetration of of what's really important, and I think you, as a as a company, you've you've done that well, and I suspect you probably see some of the benefits around retention. Um, well, yeah, we've embedded it very much so at that lower level, and when someone starts, we take them through again what this is all about. It's great having a portal that you can then um, direct somebody to, so they can start to watch some of the the training videos and and the like. But why it's really important because retention in this world recruitment so difficult. But by having, um, you know, we have a lots of conversations, real talk, um, which is one of the terminologies that we start to use now in our business and have been using for quite some time, which is sort of overarching one of the principles of, of the sessions that we use, is that everyone knows and understands that the real talk allows them a chance to work on those things and reinforce the good things, but be able to bring up in a really safe environment those things that the team can get better at or that an individual can get better at. And we just saw that last week. And because of that power of everyone collectively having a voice and having a say, mm. the branch that we were at last week, South Australia, but no doubt their performance is really good, but they'll go higher and no one will leave because they all know that they're playing a part and their voice is being heard and understood mm. and being um, listened to yeah. in what they do. Yeah. I think, Murphy, you talk about it really well in in the workshops about footy clubs, how they develop their younger players really, really well. And I reckon, Ralphie, what you're talking about is exactly that. And Murphy, you said it, that too many many, um, companies just leave it up that top level, but your investment in the people. So as much as the system is really important and some of the things you've articulated, but how important is it just develop individual people to understand about a culture code, about profiling, about building relationships, about having real talk and honest conversations, even for their own leadership journey, must be super important to the company, Ralph. Even if they, well, even if they leave, leave, as much as we don't want them to leave, we're actually developing people, which is which is a credit to you guys. But also yeah, well, building on that, Ralphie, is a lot of your people probably have never had leadership training before. And, and so it's probably really quite you know, mo- uh, monumental to them to get some of the some of this guidance and advice. Well, they've probably heard, yeah, you're right, they've heard about the terms and seen it, talked about yeah. it, but to sit down and have us invest the time. So last week, yeah, over four hours, and we had apprentices there, and we had two, we've had we had three people that are just out of their apprentices, and we're now investing in them to become, you know, leading hands and work their way up, but they're learning the right behaviours and the right uh, identification for what makes a good leader very early in the piece, but they also know that they'll get rewarded through our systems, our hidden yeah. systems, by de- demonstrating and displaying those values and behaviours in the right way of doing things. And that goes to the retention because they can see a career path. Mm. Painters that never thought that they could be a manager of a branch. We've got a, a manager of a branch in Darwin. He started as a foreman. Yeah. He's now running a branch. Now, he didn't, no one would have thought there was a career path for him yeah. within our business. But by giving everyone a chance at leadership and developing their skills and demonstrating their skills, we've opened up opportunities which helps the retention part and from an attraction perspective as well because it's a great place to work given what's on offer to run a branch, which is a pretty significant thing for anyone to be able to do at any stage of their life. One of my favourite stories, Rosie and Carly, is uh, remember that we ran a session for the um, foreman at the Port Melbourne pub upstairs one day. Yes, that's right. <clears throat> and it, was a, it wasn't a, a long session. It probably only went for a couple of hours. But at the end of it, the, the um, foreman came up with their own culture code and, you know, a list of values and behaviours or behaviours that they wanted. And they, they put it up on their work site, out wherever it was, and they, they, you know, started, was up there when, when people walked in. But someone from another company stole it and they were really affronted that someone would actually take, <laughs> take their values and behaviours. I couldn't believe it because that was theirs. I, I, I thought that was just a great story, Ralph, because it, it just showed that the ownership of the, the group had of that. Yeah, absolutely. And we've seen that through. And there's no doubt that we're, um, you know, there's a couple of opportunities still in our business where, um, we just haven't got it right. But I've got a recent example where there was someone that, again, the business thought was, we couldn't do without. But they sort of acted their way out of the business. We had we said, here's what we need to do and here's what we need to follow. They sort of 
defiantly thought, well, no, I'm going to do it my way. And we sort of said, well, no. And that person then acted the way out and that, that's fine. But that business has now flourished and they've had the most successful period since that person left. And it really goes to show that, you know, that you'd have to make that stance at some occasions as well. And yep. sometimes be quicker in making those decisions when people act themselves out of an organisation. Don't do everything you can to keep them because you've got people in there that might flourish even more with the opportunity to that they otherwise wouldn't have. Yeah, yeah, awesome. Fantastic. Like, that was fantastic. I mean, really, Carly and, and Murph, you know, Higgins is one of our flagships because, and it's funny, it's like, well, it's not funny, it's great, because listen to Ralphie. Ralphie sounds like one of our facilitators. Yeah, no. <laughs> it's like a normal, it's not like a normal culture couch live. It's like yeah. we're going to meal or James or Mel or or was. But, but, but the reason I say that is because, so many companies ask us, don't they? Oh, what what industries are working? What industry? We're going. Hang on. It works when yeah. the leaders are really committed to it, and there's no better example of that than the Higgins Paints crew and and Ralphie. Like well, what you've done, mate, has been awesome. Wait, and sorry, you know, sorry, was it, I, I was yep. just going to say before you before you close up. I, I think it, it goes a little bit to um, what we always say is, you know, we talk about Geelong or Sydney, but you know, Geelong, you've got. Frank Costa, when we set, when it all started, yeah. Frank Costa, Brian Cook, Neil Baum, Steve Hocking, um, Bomber Thompson, Tom Harley, Cameron Ling, Joel Selwood. So you got this, you got this, you know, spine yeah. of leaders. And I think uh, it's a bit the same at Higgins where you've got John and Jared and Ralph and and the exec team all supporting it. And so as a result of that, you you get that. Um, you get that clarity about what what is acceptable or not. Now, people—that's not to say that bad things don't happen. But I'm sure yeah. I'm sure there's some things that aren't 100 Ralph that you want to fix up. But I think once you start to get that buy-in, so I think it's a credit to to John and Jared and Ralph as well because because it, it just it doesn't happen unless you get that buy-in at the top. Well, and yeah, through our management teams, yeah, I know that they're talking about those things today, and I've, I'm confident that I don't need to be there on their shoulder reminding them yeah. because they're bought into it and they they see the benefits. They know it's not not just a program, yeah. that they know that the Higgins business can benefit. And so, you know, through our COO Cameron, uh, sorry, to, uh, Darren, Darren uh, and yeah, Cameron. and Cameron and others yeah. across the business, but yeah, from Jared and John's commitment to it and their challenging of us, um, and even myself, I still have to go through it. I had a session yesterday where I got feedback. So it's not just me telling people what to do. We yeah. all embrace it. So it will reflective on me and I'm going away and doing some things to make me better, which will make our team better, which will make the business better. Mm. Yeah, fantastic. That's Good awesome. Job, That's a great Love way that. to wrap up the Culture Couch Live. We could probably have another one, Jared and Carly, with me and Ralph and uh, tell some stories when Ralph was the board man at the Sydney Blondes. But that, that's probably uh, with that, Rodney, with Rocket there, Ralph. That that's might, probably that an R-rated session. Yeah. Oh, that, that, yeah. The stories I, I could tell. <laughs> no, we'll, we might leave that to the what, culture. Sorry, uh, Rudy, just one other, one other question to Ralph. Have you got a brother, Michael? Uh, well, I, I'm often mistaken. Yeah, there, there, are, there are two <laughs> My, my mother calls me Michael, and a few other people do, but yeah, haven't been called since since that for many a day. Uh, that's fantastic, mate. Really appreciate it. great great examples, and the good thing having a couple of guests on, um, Jared and Carly, as we know, it, it's not just us telling people; it's hearing from you know how it's functioning in the workplace. Because obviously, when we're doing business development meetings and we're telling people, we're putting decks up and all those sorts of things. Yeah, we can tell them as much as we. But there's probably some that go, oh, I don't know where that works. But having Ralph coming on and really explaining it in a fantastic way, yeah, how it's worked at the company. So, mate, well done, Ralph, to what you've done. Oh, thank you. Thank, thank you. Uh, everyone at Higgins Paints, as you mentioned, Murph, the exec team and, and all the people that have jumped on board. It's been a great example of, of fantastic success of a relationship between performance by design and, and Higgins. So, thanks. And thanks, Carly. And, and thanks, Murph. And uh, we'll see everyone next time on the, the Culture Gas Live. So, thanks, guys. Thank you.